بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبع سنته إلى يوم الدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers and sisters, welcome again to another episode of Benefits and Lessons Derived from Al-Adab Al-Mufrad. We are now on chapter 221, Roughness. Ah, Aisha said, I was on a camel that was somewhat troublesome, and I began to beat it. The Prophet Sallallahu said, you must be gentle. Wherever there is gentleness in some matter, it adorns it, and whenever it is taken away, it disfigures it. And this was mentioned in narration 469 in the previous lesson. But here again, because the chapter is related to roughness, Imam Bukhari has also repeated the mention of it here. Abu Nadr said, one of our men called Jabr or Juwayba said, I went to Umar while he was the Khalif to ask for something which I needed. I reached Medina during the night and in the morning I went to him. I was someone who had been given quick wits and a quick tongue. Or he said speech, meaning eloquence, and I started talking to him. I set to condemning this world and presented it as not being worth of anything. At Umar's side was a man with white hair and white clothes. When I had finished, he said, All that you have said is almost correct except for your attack on this world. Do you know what this world is? This, this world is that through which we reach our goal. Or he said, where our provision is. For the world, the hereafter. Here are actions for which you will be rewarded in the next world. He went on, for that reason a man who knew this world better than I, do made use of it. I said, Amir al-Mu'maneen, who is this man at your side? He replied, Ubay ibn Ka'b, the leader of the Muslims. So this is a weak chain, but the general meaning is correct. And as for his saying, the leader of the Muslims, it was a title which Ubay ibn Ka'b, may Allah be pleased with him, was commonly known amongst the pious predecessors. Al-Bara ibn Azib said, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, ingratitude is evil. And this shows us, brothers and sisters, from the great evils as being ungrateful to people, is that such a person will not also give thanks to Allah, the mighty and exalted, for this favors on him. Chapter 222, Maintaining Property. Al-Harith ibn Naqit al-Nakhi said, one of our men used to slaughter cults. He would say, shall I live long enough to ride this horse? Then we received Umar's letter telling us, maintain what Allah has provided for you and make it prosper, for there is yet time in the affair. So this encourages engaging in good deeds, giving thanks to Allah for his favors, preserving them and being broad-minded and optimistic about life. Anas ibn Malik said, the Prophet ﷺ said, if the signs of the hours appear, and one of you has a palm cutting in his hands, and it's possible to plant it before the hour actually comes, he should plant it. So this shows us the hadith emphasizes the tremendous benefits of planting trees and whatever is like it from which people generally derive benefit from, such as providing water. A Muslim is encouraged to carry out these deeds even at the last life opportunity because if he dies, he continues to get rewarded for the deed as the people have benefit from such things until the last day. In the same vein, it discourages wastage of any kind at any point in time. Dawood ibn Abi Dawood said, Abdullah bin Salam said to me, if you hear that the Dajjal has come out and you are planting palm saplings, do not hasten to give up putting it in order for people will still have life after that. Chapter 223, the supplication of one wronged. Abu Huraira said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, there are three supplications that are answered. The supplication of the person who is wronged, the supplication of the traveler, and the supplication of a parent against his child. So this shows us that, and there is another narration that says, beware of the supplications of the one who is wronged, even if such is a non-Muslim, for nothing screens it from being accepted. So this clearly shows us the danger of wronging people and it also shows us that when we are traveling we should make dua because the dua is accepted and it also shows us as parents we should be very careful not to make dua against our children even if they upset us because the dua could be accepted so we should always make dua to improve their affairs and for Allah to guide them if we feel some issue from them Chapter 224, prayer for provision. Owing to Allah's words, to ask him exalted is he. Provide for us and you're the best of providers. Chapter 5, verse 114. Jabat said he heard the Prophet ﷺ on the mimbar. 
He looked towards Yemen and said, O oh Allah, bring their hearts. And he looked towards Iraq and said something similar. He looked towards every horizon and said the like of that. He said, O oh Allah, provide for us out of the earth's bequest and bless us in our mud and our sa'. And that particular one has a weak chain, but as we mentioned, the general meanings are authentic or backed up by other hadith. Now the next chapter, in fact, is a very long chapter, which itself requires a complete episode by itself, inshallah. So this particular episode will be a bit shorter than normal, but inshallah, until the next episode, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.